Yeah, fellas. <laughs> uh, wrong type of pot. <laughs> right sort of sand sort of thing. So yeah, it's not a slip pot, unfortunately, but it's got the nice sand in it. So, <laughs> uh, so I'm going to have to take the sand out of that and put it in something like this. But have you noticed this under the? Um, can you see that? Whoever's growing your Tricularia graminifolia, you might want to try this. Uh, this, is a, this is our zinc loving sort of. Oh wow, I've got a U trick there or something. I don't know. No, it's just a mock. Yeah. You might want to try that. So you get your bottle. Because I learned from years ago uh, in the old greenhouse that um, if you grow CPs under a milk bottle that has um, up to about two and a half inches of water in it, no more than that really. That was, that was like the magic sort of distance. Uh, the sunlight goes for that two and a half inches of water in your milk bottle, you get better growth. Because now we learn from, because that's how we got into the, um, well Donnie got into the uh, uh, you know, polythene plastic, the, 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 the so-called thin cheap stuff. Uh, it doesn't actually cut out the, uh, the red and the green like the solar grove does. We were all encouraged to grow our plants under, this is my old, my old Cardiff's Plant Society. And we were encouraged just to grow solar with this expensive solar. Oh, the, the argument was it was so strong and, you know, we wouldn't, wouldn't craze and rip it last for years. Yeah, last for years, the years when it was cutting out, well, cutting out green, you know, reflecting green. It doesn't matter, plants are green, they reflect green. Cutting out the red, you know, half of the important part of the spectrum, because they like the red and they like the blue. And the CB seems to like growing, they like, they like morning light, the, the blue morning light rather than the red light of the afternoon sort of thing. They seem to like more of the blue light, apparently, anyway, from my observations over time. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, well, that was another sort of light bulb moment when you walk into Donnage Greenhouse and I hadn't seen colours for, well, since the, since the 70s when I came across the border, I think. And I think, oh, geez, it's like going back bloody you know, 30 years or something, you know, 20, at least 25, not 30 years. It was just, a, just bloody fucking amazing, basically. So, um, yeah, let's get back to our normal area. I may cut off a few things. On the other clip at the end, I don't know, the bell on this thing isn't loud enough for me to realise that it's, it's cut out. So, uh, if I think of them, I'll try and remember them, but... So basically, I think we're going to do it the opposite way around. I think we're going to turn the pot on its... and collect the, collect the good sand. Not the good scissors, but the good sand. From the... Oh, God. Getting it started, though, fellas. Oh. Yeah, getting it started. Oh, maybe it's a case of oh, yeah, doing something like that. And just yeah, getting it started. I think we're gonna do it that way. Roots and all boots and all are not half-hearted. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's gonna be like that. Maybe it's a case of just putting it in the bag and then bashing it up in the bag. Oh. Oh, that. Yeah, that's better. Much easier. There we go. Okay, well the next thing with the is with the Okay, so basically, the idea is to, as I said, we're going to do another pot. It's going to be this sand. This newspaper say there's one litre of newspaper say there's on the, on the top. But we're going to try and improve, we're going to try and improve the system by adding chalk down there. Because if chalk fixes nitrogen from the atmosphere, you can actually displace the, the reaction. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like a redox reaction, basically. It's like a battery. You've got a positive and you've got a negative terminal. And we're just gonna, we're just gonna spread the terminals apart. So the chalk is one terminal, and the, up the top is the uh, newspaper cellulose. You can think of it, in a way, as, a, as a, another terminal, in a way. Not quite strictly true, but... And so, if you have this really big, long profile, 
you've still got your, your terminal down the bottom, it's like a battery in a way, and you're gonna drive this reaction with the chalk, and you're gonna produce a, a nitrate zone, basically. And of course, the deeper the profile, remember, everyone, everyone says this, this thing, uh, the bigger the pots, the bigger the plants. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's right to a certain extent, but what about the, the longer the profile, the bigger the, the, bigger the nitrate zone, the, the, the bigger your massive root ball that can absorb that nitrate, the bigger the plant. So you, you, this, this argument that the, uh, um, which I've always agreed with, that you know, the bigger the, um, the bigger the pot, the bigger the plant is true, but you really should say the, uh, the deeper the pot, the bigger and deeper the pot, the, uh, the bigger the plant will be, so then. So, uh, but then again, I'm also gonna set up one where I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take one of these things, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the chalk in this thing, in, in like this. I don't know how I'm gonna arrange it. Some fancy way, I suppose. I always like fancy. Uh, just a lot, you know, just these in the bottom. Then I'm gonna put some sand and then I'm just gonna put some newspaper sailors on top, like one, two, three, one, two, three, basically. And we'll see how that goes. I'll set it up on a thing up there. That's one of my personal experiments for today. And it, it should green on the top, but really green, you know what I mean? Because we're actually fixing nitrogen from the atmosphere, but we're pulling it in, basically, by this redox reaction from the chalk, basically. So it, we, we, our newspaper sailors on the top it's just newspaper sailors, sand, and chalk. It's the chalk that's driving the, the reaction, basically. So this is the one thing that CPs don't like, but it's the one thing that drives the reaction that will grow the plant. But have you noticed, though, we're, we're growing the plants by watering them, sort of thing. And I, I ask this question, CPs only grow around water, and if they don't, they go dormant. You know, like in Australia, we have tubers drosera. When there's not water around, they can't grow because they don't, the, that their growth depends on this process of the double flush, basically, and this redox reaction, basically. And by avoiding looking at chalk, you've basically cut yourselves out of the, the solution, basically. And we're gonna show, now you might want mobile, yeah, I'm gonna tip, <laughs> after I finish with, he's gonna be walking around with two anal sphincters, and I've torn him a new one, I'm like that. Um, Maybe Mobile wants to put uh, pine needles on the top, sand and, and chalk down the bottom and, and double flush it you know, on a regular basis and I reckon he'll get even... Oh, he will be wetting himself with the amount of growth he can, and then the, the speed, the growth, the coloration. It'll be better than the... I reckon. So thank you very much Mobile for the pine needles. I think they are actually better than the... Because uh, I think it's, it's, it's a bit of a combo between some of the stuff that's in the peat and also you having the cellulose there sort of thing. I think that's why it works so well. And, um, but you try that. Pine needles on the top, about a litre, sand and then probably a, the equivalent of a litre of uh, chalk down the bottom basically. And mate, you might want to try different, you know, different lengths. End up doing because I always used to recommend to Fred Howe. I always suggested, you know, coming from WA to think, he used to try and grow Drosia gigantea. I, told, I used to tell him, oh no, it grows 